Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to code directional rolling inspired by Dark Souls. A rolling animation with root motion is required for this tutorial, so I will be using a free rolling animation that I was able to get from the Epic Games Action RPG template. I have provided the download in the description. However, keep in mind that this animation is poor quality, so I recommend that you only use it for testing purposes until you're able to either buy a better one or make a better one yourself. What you're watching right now is an example of this directional rolling system working in engine with high quality animations. If you're able to acquire high quality animations, your rolling system can look this good as well. If you're doing this from scratch, let's go ahead and create a new project. We're using a third person template. And create the project. In the description you'll find a free rolling animation with root motion. If you've downloaded that, let's go ahead and import it. You want to set the skeleton as the default UE4 mannequin skeleton. And leave all the other settings as defaults and hit import. And here's the animation. So one thing you might notice with this animation is that the hands are kind of messed up. But that's something that you would have to take into like an editing program such as Maya to fix. I got the animation from the Epic Games Action RPG example project and that issue is due to the differences in skeletons but this will be just fine for the purposes of this tutorial. So now we want to enable root motion. Enabling root motion allows you to use the motion from the animation to drive the capsule. To start out you want to go to edit, project settings, input, and we want to add the input for the roll. So row and we'll make it spacebar. Also if you have a controller you can add that too. Go ahead and add game pad space button right. That's the B button. If you're using the default action mappings then jump and roll will both be spacebar which will cause problems. So what you can do is click shift right here. So basically that means one of the shift keys must be pressed down when the key event is received in order for the input action to be acknowledged. So you want to go to your third person character blueprint. So now what we want to do is input action roll on pressed. We're going to do a branch character movement is falling. If is falling it's false so that means you're not in the air. Have another branch. In Dark Souls, if you're moving and you press a roll button, the character will roll. If you're not moving, the character will do a step back animation. So we're going to go ahead and add functionality for that. In order to do that, we're going to create a macro. Just call this macro has moving input. Basically what we're going to do is just check if there's any movement input from the player. To do that, we need to get the character movement component. From there, get last movement input vector. Drag out from the return value and type in not equal. Okay, and now we need to just plug that into the output. Okay, go back to the event graph. Drag out that macro we just created and plug that into the condition. Now right click on the rolling animation. Click create and a montage. In order to get montages working, we want to go to the anim blueprint and get the default slot, slot, default slot. Open it up. Make sure that the right slot is selected here. I have default slot selected because that's what I used in my animation blueprint. Okay, now go back to your third person character on the true path. So that means that the player has movement input. Top in play and a montage. And just select the roll montage. Okay, now let's test out everything that we've done so far. So as you can see, even though it's not directional, the roll is working. And if we jump and we try to roll, we can't roll, but as soon as we land, we can roll. And if we're not moving and we press the roll button, he does nothing. But if we start moving, he rolls. But now we have this bug where if we spam the roll button, our character kind of glitches. So how do we fix that? To fix that, we're going to create a function to play the animation montage. So go ahead and delete play in a montage. And let's create a function. This montage will be high priority. It'll cancel over everything. So I'm going to call it play high priority montage. I'm going to explain the purpose of this function in greater detail in the next part of this tutorial where I discuss handling montage priorities and montage canceling. Okay, we're going to need to add some inputs. 
And this input we need to be in, in a montage. We type in in a montage object type object reference. And we'll call it montage. Okay, the other input we're going to add is start section. So that way you can specify the start section name if you need to. We are going to do the same thing for the play rate. So make this one a float. We'll call it in play rate. Okay, in the outputs, we'll call this one, we'll leave it a float and call it an play rate. Okay, now get the mesh. Okay, now get anim instance. Okay, now drag up from here and we need to get montages playing. And from the montage here, you want to plug it in to montage. From the exec pin, we need a branch. Now plug montage is playing into the condition. Break the true path by holding alt and clicking. Now we need to create a variable. And I'll just name this one high priority montage. Drag out from montage and set that as high priority montage. And plug that into the false path. And now play in a montage. And now all we need to do is plug everything up. Compile, save, and that's all we need to do. Now drag out the play high priority montage function we just created. And plug it into the true path. And select the row montage. And don't forget to set the in play rate to 1. Now let's test. As you can see, when we spam the roll button, we no longer have that bug. Okay, now that we have coded the functionality to know whether we should play a rolling animation or whether we should play a step back animation, we can go ahead and try to play the step back animation. However, we don't have an animation to step back. So what we're going to do is duplicate the animation, then open it up, set rate scale to minus 1, save. Create in a montage, backward montage. Then in the third person character, just copy this function, paste it on the false path, select the roll backward montage we just created, and now it's test. So if the roll button is pressed while there's player input, the character will roll. If there's no player input, he will roll backwards. You can replace this with a step back animation if you have one. If not, this will do for testing purposes. So in order to get a directional roll, go ahead and right click, type set actor rotation. In the true path, plug set actor rotation in. Right click, type in get last movement input vector. Drag out the return value. Type in rotation from x vector. And then plug the return value of that into the new rotation. Compile, save, and now it's tested out. Okay, and as you can see, now we have directional roll. But there's one problem. The character kind of jerks into the direction he's rotating in. This looks kind of gamey and just doesn't look very natural at all. So next, we're going to work on making the rotation of the roll smooth. Okay, so go into the third person character, delete all of this code, and plug that function back into the true path. Okay, and go into your blueprints folder, create a new folder, call it interfaces. Open the folder up, right click, under Blueprints, Blueprint Interface. We'll call this one Rotate Owner BPI. Open it up. Okay, we're going to create two functions. The first function we're going to create, we'll name it Get Desired Rotation. The second function we're going to create, we'll call it Start Rotating with Limit. Okay, this first function will have one output, and this output will be a type Rotate. We'll call this rotation. Rotating with limit will have two inputs. They will both be of top float. The first one will name max possible rotation. The second one will be max degrees per second. I'll save. Now go to your third person character and implement the interface. Go to class settings. Under interfaces, click add. Copy 
the rotate owner VPI that we just created. Okay, and under interfaces here, get desired rotation should show up. Click on this function. And now we need to do a few things in here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get this has movement input again. And we're gonna do a branch. We're going to plug the return value of this has movement input into the branch. So if it has movement input is true, we're going to rotate to the, la the player's last movement input vector. So get last movement input vector, drag up from there, rotation from x vector, and plug that in to the rotation. On the false path, we just want to return the actor's rotation. So return node, get actor rotation, and plug that into the return node. Okay, now go back to your Blueprints folder, create a new folder, and call it Anim Notifies. Open the folder. In this folder, right click, select Blueprint Class, click All Classes, now type in Anim Notify. And select that. Rotate Owner AN. Okay, open it up. Okay, so now we're going to create a few variables. Both of them will be of top float. The first one we'll call max degrees per second. The second one we will call max possible rotation. Both of them will be instance editable. The default value for max degrees per second will be 720. And the default value for max possible rotation will be 180. Max possible rotation is just the maximum amount that we can rotate. Max degrees per second is just the maximum amount of degrees that we can rotate per second. Okay, and now we need to implement the interface. Select class settings under interfaces. Search for the interface we created. Rotate owner VPI. Okay, and now we need to override a function. Select override and select receive and notify. Drag out from mesh component. Type in get anim instance. Drag out from the anim instance and type in start rotating with the limit. And plug max degrees per second into max degrees per second. Plug max possible rotation into max possible rotation. Compile, save. Okay, and now go to your animation blueprint. In the event graph, we need to implement the interface. So click class settings, type in rotate owner BPI. Compile, save. Okay, now we need to create a variable. Variable we have top boolean, and we'll call it should rotate. Drag out from somewhere that's connected to the event blueprint animation update. We need a branch. Git should rotate, plug it into the condition. And before we do anything else, let's go ahead and collapse this to a graph so we can keep things nice and tidy. We'll call this rotation for directional row. Okay, now we need to create some more variables. This one will be up top float, and we'll call it time elapsed. We need to create another variable of top float. We'll call this one rotate time. Create another variable of top float. We'll call this one max degrees per second. The default value for max degrees per second will be 720. From the true path, set time elapsed. Get time elapsed. Float, float plus float, get world delta sessions, plug this into time elapsed, create another branch, get time elapsed, get rotate time, float less than or equal float. Plug time elapsed and rotate time into the float less than or equal float. Plug that into the condition. On true, get desired rotation. Uncheck context sensitive. We want get desired rotation message. Target, we want to try get on owner. Plug that into the target. From here, we want to set actor rotation. Now type in try get pawn owner, get actor rotation, 
drag up from here and type in perimeter to constant. Plug the return value into new rotation. Plug the return value for try get pawn owner into the target. From the get desired rotation message, get the rotation and plug that into the target. For the delta time, right click, get world delta seconds. Plug that into the delta time. The enter speed, right click, just get max degrees per second. Plug that into the enter speed. Plug this in, in as an output. On the false path, you want to plug this into an output as well. Right click and check context sensitive again. Start rotating with limit. We want to get the event start rotating with limit. Drag up here, type in set rotate time. To get the rotate time, get the max possible rotation, float, divided by float, get the max possible degrees per second, plug that in here, plug that into rotate time, drag out from set rotate time, type in max degrees per second. Double click here, drag out from here and plug that into max degrees per second. Set time elapsed. Set should rotate to true. And create a custom event. Call this event stop rotating. And in this event, we're simply gonna set should rotate to false. And we're gonna call this function on the false path. Okay, now open up the roll montage. Scroll down to the notifies, right click, select add notify, and we need to add the rotate owner AN that we created. Save, and now we should have smooth directional rolling. Now let's test. And as you can see, we have smooth rotation for the rolling. We have two more bugs that we haven't fixed yet. I'm gonna demonstrate these bugs now. The solution for these bugs involves handling montage priorities and montage canceling. However, this video is already a bit too long, so I'm going to make a part 2 where I talk about how to handle montage priorities and montage canceling. So look forward to that. Thanks for watching. If you want any more tutorials with Unreal Engine 4, just be sure to let me know in the comments below.